Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. It is the start of June and it's time to wrap up what I managed to make in the month of May. So I'm going to talk about the things that I finished, things I didn't quite finish in the month of May. Uh, knitting, spinning, crocheting, weaving, that kind of stuff. Um, and just take you through my projects. For those of you who don't know, I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest, the Northwest region of the United States. I live in the state of Washington in the greater Seattle area. And uh, the weather here is perking up. It's spring, moving into summer weather. Uh, it's very beautiful outside, although full of pollen. So allergy season is upon us. <laughs> so I want to start with things that I did manage to finish in the month of May, and I did manage to finish a couple of things. Uh, last month I did not, so April saw zero finished objects, but May is now seeing a couple of them. So the first thing that I finished I'm actually wearing, and it's the skirt that I was knitting. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop in some footage and photographs here of me wearing this skirt. Um, it is made out of cotton yarn. Um, I think maybe one of them was a cotton acrylic blend, uh, but it's primarily cotton yarn, about a sport weight. Um, and the fabric is very... Uh, drapey and loose. It feels very comfortable. Um, I actually really like this skirt. I was worried that I wasn't going to like it. I'm not a particularly... Mm, I, I'm not one who wears a lot of dresses and skirts. I prefer pants. So <laughs> making a skirt was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I was kind of hoping it would help push me into wanting to wear more of these flowy garments, especially when it is quite warm. And while you might be thinking, because this is how I thought, it doesn't get above like 90 degrees in the Pacific Northwest or even above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so like you should be fine. But guess what? It does actually sometimes get that warm in this area. Uh, so it'd be nice to have something I can wear, feel comfortable in, that's breathable and looks nice, and this kind of fits, uh, fits the bill for those things. So things that I really like about this garment, number one, the elastic band at the top of the skirt. So the pattern, yeah, I don't know, can I angle the camera there? So the pattern has you knit, um, I did a solid color on the back side, but you knit, do a purl ridge, and then knit on. And so basically the fabric folds over, and inside of here is an elastic band. So, um, yeah, this has got to be the number one thing that I like about this skirt. So if you think of cotton yarn, if you've knit or crocheted or made things out of cotton yarn, you know that it's not something that keeps its rigidity unless you're creating it at a very tight gauge. This garment is not created with a really tight gauge. The, the objective is to be loose and flowy and breathable, right? So the idea of a skirt staying up without any help frightened me. <laughs> so. Uh, the elastic band is fantastic. Um, I think it's really great that I'm able to fit that to my body. So it wasn't really a prescribed cut your elastic band to this length. There really were little instructions about this in the pattern itself. I did some extra searching on my own to find the right um, length to cut it at. So I did measure around. I just took the elastic around my waist at that height where I like my um, skirts and pants and things to rest on my hips. Um, and I put the elastic bag band around there and then went in like two to four inches more, 
right? Because you don't want the elastic to sit on there all loose, you want it to be somewhat taut. Um, and so I cut the elastic there, sewed the two ends together, and then just sewed it into my knitting by just sewing it in with the yarn. Very easy. Uh, so that's the number one thing that I like about this skirt. The second thing I really like about this skirt are the colors. So the pattern is written for you to use um, a particular brand of yarn. Um, you know, it was published by a yarn company um, that sells and produces yarn. And so it was made with a, a particular product in mind. I wanted to use yarn from my stash without having to go out and buy new. So I kind of finagled around and found something that would work. So I used two different colorways and decided to stripe them together. And both colors followed a gradient pattern. So one faded from light grays into dark grays and the other one faded from a light blue into darker blues, which then would go into grays and then into black. And I really like that you can see that in the skirt. So the project uh, is finished. It's off the needles. I washed it, locked it, and I'm wearing it. And I couldn't be any happier. I do have a bunch of yarn left over. I barely, barely even started into the black. I was looking forward to having that really dark solid black bottom edge on the skirt but I didn't get there with the prescribed length and I thought about knitting this longer but I thought well this is my first skirt that I'm making I'll just go with the length length written into the pattern I do like the pictures of the finished object um, on the model uh, and decided to just go with that and I can always make more and decide to make the next one longer. So that's actually what I'm planning to do is knit another skirt, I think probably following a different pattern. Um, although I really like the shape of this like A-line skirt that just continues to get um, wider and wider in circumference as you go. Um, but I was a little worried about the sheer weight of that being an even longer skirt, so I decided against it and I bound off where the pattern suggested to. Um, I'm not a super fan of the couple rows of garter stitch at the end because it does roll and I feel like it gives it, it doesn't give it that clean edge that I was hoping for. I wasn't wanting a rolled edge on the bottom. Um, so I'm not really sure how to fix that and stop it from rolling. I was really hoping that blocking would help with that, but it's still rolling in majority of that bottom edge. So anyway, um, so the next skirt that I create, I will use a different pattern. I've of course been searching and found some that have um, lacy pattern details to them and I think they look absolutely stunning and yeah I'm hoping to create more skirts and uh, perhaps some dresses and just incorporate those things into my wardrobe. So that was a huge project <laughs> to get off the needles uh, and I was really really happy about that and so once I finished the skirt I turned my attention to a smaller project on the needles uh, and that project is the Musselberg hat and I also finished this uh, so I finished the skirt and I think maybe two days later I finished the hat all of this was finished in the last week of May <laughs> of course um, but yeah the skirt had so much knitting still to do on it I wasn't sure how far I was gonna take it it was just all up in the air question mark so I try to put as much energy as possible into the skirt because well it's warm and I want to wear it <laughs> um, but then when I finished the skirt you know the hat I did know how long I wanted to make it and whatnot it's a very well written pattern while my hands are super warm inside of this hat right now <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, this is the Musselberg hat and I just love this pattern. It's so cleverly simple. It's such a simple idea for a pattern and it took someone being clever to put it all down into writing that other folks could understand. And I just so appreciate taking the basics of hat construction, adding this cool element of knitting it to be a double layer hat so that you basically knit a tube. I mean, I just, it's ingenious and I super appreciate this pattern. Um, I knit this out of Knit Picks palette and the colorway is Shoal. I did use one whole ball, so 50 grams, plus I dipped into a second one. But you can see the second one is almost still um, full. So this uh, really tidy bit here is the outside of the ball that top layer and then in here is getting into the messier bits underneath. So I didn't even make it all the way through that top layer of yarn um, to finish off the hat. And I did actually accidentally knit this a little bit longer than I intended. I was reading the wrong part of the pattern. It was entirely my fault. Um, but I'm happy with it. So the last time I knit the Musselberg, I made a hat for my mom for Christmas. And she had requested a ponytail hat, which means having um, an opening at the top. And uh, I wanted to knit this pattern also without the opening at the top and just create like a super warm hat and this is a super warm hat <laughs> so it is double layer here because it's a tube and you tuck one end inside the other one and then around the brim it ends up being four layers thick because you're rolling this up so yeah it does get pretty warm here in the summer not for extended periods of time but there's like a week where it's really freaking hot right well, kind of the same thing in the winter. There's about a week where it's really freaking cold. And so this hat will be really nice for those days. Um, when it's windy and cold, I feel like this is going to be amazing to block out all of those cold winds. And of course I love the color. I have a ponytail, so <laughs> this isn't going on super well. <laughs> uh, but I love the color and it's just gonna work really well in my winter wardrobe. And the last thing that I finished is another skein of hand spun yarn. Um, I'm spinning this on my Turkish drop spindle which means it's super slow. <laughs> uh, but I finished another um, ounce of fiber. So I have now finished spinning three ounces total out of eight ounces. And so this is in, wow, there is so much hair stuck in here. Dog hair and human hair. Um, so this is in the Rambling Rose colorway, which is primarily pinks and blues. And the fiber is from Socked In Farms. This is um, Baby Doll, Southdown Sheep, mixed with alpaca, if I remember correctly. Um, so I have three ounces spun, five ounces to go. And of course, I'm debating now uh, on whether or not to spin some of this on my spinning wheel to try to speed it up. I'm not sure. I'm kind of mulling it over because part of the point of this project was that it would be slow on the drop spindle, but then of course it's feeling like really slow, so 
I don't know. I'm tossing this idea around. But I should really get the fourth ounce on the spindle. Because either way, I would like to spin at least half of it on my Turkish spindle. And I could do the other half on my spinning wheel. But it kind of depends on what it is I want to use this yarn for. Because if you mix and match tools, it can show up in the yarn as, you know, that the consistency is not matching up and things like that. So, I don't know. It's an idea. We'll see what I decide to do. So there are projects that I did not finish in the month of May that are still on my needles. And one of those projects is this scrappy sock that I'm knitting out of scraps of yarn in my stash. And if you watched last month's video, you'll notice that zero progress has been made on this. Zero. <laughs> um, because I'm trying to be clever with incorporating the yarns and basically what I need to do is weigh them as I go and keep a record so I have enough for a second sock and can replicate it on a second sock. And so while the skirt and the hat were basically just knit in the round without much thought, this is requiring me to have my pen and paper and my scale nearby. And so I just didn't really feel like working on this. Uh, so this month I would like to pick this back up again and make progress because the intention is for this to be a gift for a family member um, around Christmas time, right? <laughs> Uh, so I would like to finish it and put it in the gift pile. But working on socks is something I really like to do. So of course I cast on a new sock and this has seen much more attention than that one because this is mindless knitting in the round. So I've already finished one sock. Yeah. Uh, and I have the second one on the needles and you can see I'm past the heel I'm now past the gusset and it really is just knitting in the round so this yarn is um, Knit Picks Felici in fact I have more on the shelf I don't know where this ball band went hang on okay so this is Knit Picks Felici Friendly Skies is the name of the colorway. Um, it comes in 50 gram balls. This is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. Uh, and these socks will be for me, so they're shorty socks. And my hope is to get a pair of shorty socks out of this 150 gram ball. However, I weighed this sock and it measured 25 grams, which is great, half, right? Then I weighed the yarn that was left and it weighed 24 grams. So it's possible that I'm going to have to dip into my second ball in order to finish this one pair. Which, if that happens, and I guess either way, I would like to make a second pair of shorty socks using that second ball, but that time use a contrasting color for the heel. Um, and then that way I make sure I, I don't run out. I have enough to finish and then I'll probably have a little bit left over, which is also fine because I've got a basket over there where I'm putting leftover self striping sock yarn and they're just in little hand wound balls. And what I'd like to do is make um, scrappy socks out of leftover self-striping sock yarn. Um, maybe it was, it was a few years ago. I can't remember if it was two or three years ago. I used 
leftover sock yarn to weave a scarf for Advent. So I, basically I created my own Advent calendar out of um, leftover yarn and then each day I would weave that color for so many inches uh, and I I did pre like align all the colors to get a design that I wanted basically I put them in the order of a rainbow which would be totally appropriate for the month of June happy pride month by the way um, it's just kind of too warm to wear a wool scarf so I didn't quite plan that all the way through but I have a like muted rainbow scarf uh, to wear when I need when I need it or want it or whatever <laughs> but um, yeah so leftover self striping yarn I will find a use for but this time I'm planning um, some scrappy socks out of them I think it'll be fun to mix and match the different stripe patterns um, to create some socks but I do I'm really enjoying making socks that aren't perfectly matched but you can tell go together so um, this first sock started with the blue and transitioned into the black and then on the you know because I kept going with the stripes here so the stripes showing up in the heel and there's this little bit of yellow here well kind of the same thing over here <laughs> so it starts with the yellow white and then you've got blue and the blue and black in the heel here you've got that little bit of blue showing up in the front of the sock so I think that's kind of fun that that's happening so you can tell these socks do go together but they're not an exact match sometimes I do want my socks to be matchy matchy other times I'm totally fine if they're not okay while we're on the topic of knitting I'll show you <laughs> more knitting uh, so uh, new projects that I have started I guess those socks count as a new project since last month sorry uh, so I started another garment this time it's a sweater so I was looking through patterns for inspiration of course I've got all these things I want to make but I'm also wanting to use things from my stash so I have things in my stash from you know over five years ago that I'd really like to use like all of these pastel shades of Knit Picks palette they have been in my stash for over five years um, Michael got me those as a gift back when I like first started getting back into knitting seriously and they've been kind of just hanging out in here so I'd really like to tap into using a lot of these things so I have some yarn that I bought specifically with patterns in mind so I made sure I got enough yardage and all the same dye lot and all that good stuff to create things so I cast on a project using yarn that I bought for a particular sweater pattern let me get balls with the labels still on them okay so these are all the same brand this is loops and thread impeccable it is a hundred percent acrylic it's a worsted weight yarn um, each ball has about 277 yards and I have I think five balls of the tan what, do we, what is this colorway called sorry soft taupe and I have one ball of this beautiful burgundy color so the pattern um, I'll find a picture to put on the screen um, but it's this really simple raglan sweater with these striping details and like minimal minimal color work um, but I just think it looks sleek and uh, kind of sporty and I just wanted it in my wardrobe and I have the yarn so I went back through my library found this pattern and thought yeah 
I do actually still want this sweater so let me cast it on and make it well you know I have the yarn and I'm still interested in it and I read through I skimmed the whole pattern to, to get a sense for what was going on and it was a bit confusing because I thought it was knit top down so the way the pattern is separated I was confused no 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 it is a bottom-up sweater which makes way more sense now when I read it anyway so I did a gauge swatch of course I did not get gauge so I'm knitting a different size to accommodate my gauge I believe I'm supposed to get 18 stitches in four inches but I'm only getting 16 yeah, it was four stitches per inch. So I'm going down a size. But um, you also knit this in pieces and seam it up later. So it's not knit in a round, it's, I'm knitting it flat. Okay. So this is the back piece. So there's the ribbing at the bottom and the minimal color work detail and what's kind of clever about this color work is that it occurs every um, ninth row which is an odd number so yes it does mean one time you'll go across knitting and another time you'll come back purling having to do the two colors which at first did not interest me in having to purl. So I was going to change the number of rows to make it easier on myself. But actually this way, I can carry the yarn up the side and then go back. And then it'll be over here. So I'll carry the yarn up the side and go back. So it's actually kind of clever. So that's what I'm doing. And then that way, I don't have all these ends to weave in, which is fantastic. So I'd actually rather do one row of purling color work than have to weave in two ends for every one of these rows. So yeah, I'm making good progress. Um, I need to take some measurements on myself for how long I want this to be. Um, I do want to follow the pattern, but um, making it a smidge longer is an easy modification to make. And I'll need to know that now, since I'm working it from the bottom up. So uh, basically, I'm just going to continue in this until the, um, until the sleeve part. And then at the sleeve, it'll start doing those raglan decreases right so if I want this to be a little longer um, I need to know that but I didn't just start a sweater I also started a weaving project so um, I have woven some towels that we use in our kitchen and I love them I love the um, and I don't know I just felt inspired one day to warp up a loom to make some more towels. <laughs> um, part of the motiv motivation is that um, I don't know why it is becoming increasingly difficult to find cotton towels in the store, but microfiber towels are like all the rage. I hate them. <laughs> I do not like them. Um, they do not absorb the water. They just push it around. And they feel like they catch on every little hangnail and scratch and fingernail. And it just bothers me. I don't like how they feel. Texturally, it irks me. I like cotton towels. <laughs> they feel good. They absorb the water. I like them. So... If that means I need to make my own towels, so be it. So <laughs> uh, that's part of it. I'd also like to um, 
maybe make some towels as gifts. I feel like folks could always use more towels. And if cotton towels really are getting harder and harder to find, then maybe they would appreciate some as well. So, um, let me see if I can show this to you. Kind of. <laughs> so I have a Becca Loom, uh, B-E-K-A, and I got this at a flea market with my spinning wheel. This poor loom has seen better days. It's not in tip-top condition, but it gets the job done. So I warped up the loom. I used um, white and blue. I've got two different blues in here. This is like a solid blue, and then this is like a variegated blue. These are 100% cotton. They're basically like peaches and cream and dishy and those, you know, thick worsted weight cotton yarns you can find in a, in big box stores. Um, but they're just uh, yarns I had laying around in my stash that don't all have labels for them anymore. <laughs> And, you know, what better way to use them up than in some towels. So, the loom is warped. I did the tiniest amount of weaving on it, but um, my back has been bothering me lately. And I don't have a stand for this thing or anything, so I have to wedge it between myself and a, a table ledge. And, you know, if you, if you weave with a rigid held loom like this, you know it, you gotta, you gotta do a bit of leaning and pushing and pulling. Anyway, with the back pain I was experiencing, it was just, it wasn't going to happen. It, it hurt too much to weave, which is another reason why I got a lot of knitting done on my skirt. Um, is that I've been having some health issues and I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but anyway, I've got the loom warped. I'm hoping it will accommodate four large towels. And my plan this time is to fold over the hems and sew them on my sewing machine. Which is what I did with my most recent towels. But I wove those out of uh, much thinner yarn. So it was easier to fold it up. This is much thicker, so that hem is going to be pretty thick. Um, but that's my plan, is is to create some more towels, and I'll have fun playing around with different patterns of uh, stripes and plaid and things like that. So I meant to record this episode last weekend, and it's been rough. Um, I've been experiencing some back pain and abdominal pain and I'm not sure if the two are related or if they're just two different things happening at the same time. Uh, I have been pretty active in my garden. Uh, lots of bending over to pick weeds, bending over to sow seeds, <laughs> uh, turning compost piles and things like that. So I have been putting um, a lot of stress and strain on my body doing activities I haven't done in a while. Uh, but then also in my abdomen just doesn't feel right. I'm not going to go into all the details, but I've been in my doctor's office. I've been in for, um, you know, giving samples and scans and I still don't know what's going on and it kind of bothers me. So, um, I'm a pretty healthy person. It's kind of annoying that all these tests are coming back as you are a-okay. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm experiencing pain and it's frustrating. So, um, I'm dealing with it and crafting is helping and I have a very supportive family so I'm gonna and I have good health insurance so I'm I'm fine uh, it's just kind of frightening well what is it because if all the simple things come back 
as negative and you're just fine, then it's got to be something serious, right? Or is it not? I don't know. Um, but last weekend I was not um, feeling well enough to sit here and record an episode because um, I was in a lot of pain. And you know how it is when you're hurting. It's hard to do this. Uh, and so it's it's been an interesting couple of weeks teaching um, and just coming in and telling the students like, I'm not angry, I'm not upset, but my face looks this way because I really hurt right now. <laughs> um, but I want to be here for you and I want to, you know, help you on this learning journey. And so I'm going to be here for you as much as possible, but there are some days when the pain is probably going to be too much and I'm going to have to stay home. And so I've been using sick time and that's not something I do lightly. Um, getting a substitute instructor is not always easy, especially for the subject I teach, which is statistics. Um, it's just tricky. And it's spring quarter. We're getting close to graduation. There's a lot of celebration events going on, sporting events, debate events, like everything is going on. And then on top of it, let me feel like crap. So... <laughs> I just didn't have the capacity to record an episode last week, and I know that you all are so gracious and understanding of those things, and I really appreciate it. Um, I've kind of been in and out on my crafting. There have been days when I have been hurting so much that I didn't even feel like I could pick up my knitting needles. Like. I can't even sit still because sitting here too long makes me hurt and so then let me stand and then that hurts and then let me lay on my side and then that hurts and it's just annoying. It's annoying but I'm also worried that I don't I don't know what's going on. All right, so Mike just let me know that my bread timer went off. So, I need to get back into the kitchen, finish making that. Um, I said everything I planned to say anyway, so, <laughs> um, next up on the channel, let's see, I don't know what's coming up next, I'll have to look at a calendar, but you can look forward to more content on the channel, including a feature video about my skirt that I just knit, as well as taking a look around my garden, because lots of things are going on in the garden. And I'm very excited about it. So until I see you next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye, everyone.